world, and this man, Tom Gentry, will battle today to hold on to the top spot in the Superboat class against defending champion Al Copeland and his Popeye's Diet Coke. The challenge begins here on Lake Pontchartrain in the 1987 Popeye's Offshore Grand Prix. The HFC Pro Series, in association with ESPN, presents the 1987 Popeye's Offshore Grand Prix. This is the second race of the HFC Pro Series and the third national race of the season. Over 50 boats will challenge the waters of Lake Pontchartrain in New Orleans, Louisiana. These giants of offshore powerboat racing, traveling at speeds in excess of 100 miles per hour, will do battle for national points and $400,000 in prize money. The HFC Pro Series 1987 Popeye's Offshore Grand Prix is sponsored by HFC. Performance, it's what separates the best from the rest. Welcome to New Orleans, Louisiana for this, the third stop on the offshore racing season circuit, and this is the second stop on the HFC Pro Series. This is the Popeyes Offshore Grand Prix. Hello, everyone. Dick Crippen along with Jim Hendrick. And, Jim, we look out on a day that could present some interesting weather situations. We have Lake Pontchartrain with three triangles, a large, a medium, and a small. They'll negotiate a lot of turns, and we have 18 to 22 knots coming out of the northeast. Being that this is a shallow lake, 15 feet at the deepest, it could create some problems for the smaller boats. Al Copeland in the super class does not have his new boat ready as yet. He was hoping he would. He'll have to give chase to the Gentry Turbo Eagle out of Honolulu, Hawaii, because, you know, Tom Gentry is the boat to beat after the last race at Fort Myers. We have 157.3 nautical miles for the open class and the super boats, and it's going to be a fun race, but it's going to be also a race where they're going to have to pay some attention. And Bob Kaiser, of course, in ACR Systems, another boat to watch as we move down into the uh, open class. And we have uh, John D'Elia, who will be out there in special edition again. So far, undefeated. He is hoping to make it three in a row. That's exactly right. So I'm looking forward to the action. This is the first race on fresh water. I don't know if it's going to make a difference. The drivers don't seem to think so. Prior to the race, of course, all the drivers come together for a driver's meeting. And, Jim, this has got to be one of the most important aspects of the race, all sorts of pertinent information being dispersed. Like Angel 1 and Angel 2, the two helicopters, which are medic helicopters, what they're going to do if it's a storm course, and, of course, the rules of the road, which is navigation. And talking about the course, this one is a little bit unique in that it's the first one of the season to be held on a lake. Let's talk about what makes the course different. Well, today's race course is comprised of varying multiples of three basic triangular laps. A long lap, a medium lap, and a short lap. Now, on the long lap, the boats proceed east from the start line, four miles to checkpoint number one. Then it's 15 miles northwest to point number two. Just off the fourth hump on the Causeway Bridge, the racers then make a 180-degree turn, come back south for 15 miles to P3, and then it's back on to the first point. On the medium lap, the boats head northwest for 11 miles to number four, then south to checkpoint three, and then back to P1 again. The short lap starts by heading northwest for three and a half miles to point number five, then southwest for a mile and a half to point three, and then the finish line. Now, each class must complete a specific number of long, medium, and short laps in order to win. And this course is ideal for over 200,000 spectators that have come to cheer these racers on. And this is the first sponsored professional offshore powerboat racing series in the history of the sport. This unprecedented four-race series is also the richest in prize money with over $400,000. It represents an all-time high for the sport of offshore racing. There you see the boathouses, which also line Lake Pontchartrain, rather unique for this area. Dick Crippen and Jim Hendrick will return to Lake Pontchartrain, Louisiana for the start of the 1987 Popeye's Offshore Grand Prix. tradition of horsepower that's making waves. Racing fans, this buzz for you. People really enjoy offshore racing for a lot of different reasons. Glenn Sanders of HFC is watching that interest grow. The coverage is getting better, the crowds are getting better, and the race is getting more fun, and we're excited to be involved. As you know, we're a national company. And this coverage will be national. It'll bring good publicity for HFC and for the sport. We have a corporate philosophy. If we're involved in something, we commit time and money and talent, and that means top executives being there. Plus, it's a lot of fun. 
A lot of fun to stand on the sidelines and watch. A lot of fun to be involved in the races. And at this point, the drivers are now getting ready. Some of the boats going out onto the course. A good field of boats today, Jim. Yeah, 50 boats and six national classes racing here today and over 30 helicopters. Looks like a apocalypse now. <laughs> it certainly does. And just about every boat has their own helicopter out there. And there you can see some of our TV crew as we get ready to get you some of the most unbelievable shots you'll ever see in your life. Here's the starting lineup. In the super boats, Popeye's Diet Coke and the Gentry Eagle. And also the two Max in entries. You know, Al Copeland in his number one Popeye's lost the first race of this year. It was definitely not what he had hoped for. We blew an engine about the last lap of the race, which is probably gonna, was, was, was going to be uh, destined to be the most exciting lap. And um, so that kind of put us out of the ball game, and we were lucky to save the boat at that point. Well, he's not in his suit now. He's in his racing garb, and he's ready to go on a very rough Lake Potts train. And one of the things he's going to have to go against is the Gentry Turbo Eagle. They're coming off a much-needed win. You think that overconfidence might be a problem for the crew? No, we're not confident. We just hope that we can get out there and finish, and I think if we can finish, we'll do well. Uh, you know, this is a, a business of attrition, I guess, and uh, we're just going to do our best. I don't think we're confident, really. We're just trying the best we can. Well, Tom, the best is what it will take, because changing conditions on Lake Pontchartrain can make this race today a real challenge. The problem with, uh, with the Popeyes race is because the lake is so shallow, uh, a little bit of wind can really, um, can really chop the lake up a little bit. In that event, we'll just hop in that big DV and go. Well, a guy that'll be hopping into a catamaran-type boat is a new face to the Superboat class, Chris Laven, former modified division champ. He's borrowed a boat for this race, but he's excited about his new well, boat. Uh, the, the boat's being fitted right now with the F-16 canopies. And uh, towards uh, after November last year, we did quite a bit of testing with some supercharged engines, uh, sort of chasing an unofficial record, which never came to be. At any rate, we, we really like the way the boat's set up with those supercharged engines and decided to go running in the Superboat class. But it certainly isn't all just equipment as far as engines and such. We've just met four of the Superboat drivers. And as we say, it takes more than just the drivers to make a race happen. It takes the involvement of a lot of dedicated people. You know, I wish everybody could come down to an offshore race and just wander around the pits at the color, the vehicles. It's a happening. That's right. I think it's competition in the pits as well as out of the pits on the course. And, of course, the real heart of it comes down to the mechanical, the engines, but by golly, they want to make it look good, too. Here's the starting lineup for the open class boats in the number seven ACR systems. Bob Kaiser, it'll be Craig Barry in the Silver Bullet. Wildcat is David Street and John Antonelli in the Spirit of America. Willie Falcone in Team Seahawk. Seahawk with Sal Magluta and Ed Martinez in Thriller. The super and open boats will be starting together today. With so many boats on this large Lake Pontchartrain course, navigation is going to play a very important role. This race is going to be uh, very interesting. One of the reasons is they've, they've put a hooker in it on the seventh lap. It goes from short back to the medium lap, back to the short. It will be fast, and the navigation has to be accurate. So it's going to be interesting. And the interest starts right away with the start of the Super and Open class. Number nine, Gentry has taken the lead in the Super Boats. Right behind, first and open, is the Team Seahawk. Now number 25, the Seahawk boat of Sal Magluta has taken the lead in the Open away from his teammate. 231 Maxson has poured it on and has taken the lead in the Super Boats. So we've had a lot of changing of position. Here's your second place runner, Thriller, in the Open class. Now the Team Seahawk has dropped back to third. And that's Willie Falcone. The Spirit of America is coming up now into fourth slot, and they have the canopies on that boat. It's a beautiful red boat with two 700-horsepower Mercury inboard engines. John O. Antonelli at the wheel. And there's the ACR Systems boat. Bob Kaiser now riding in fifth place in the open division. The other Maxon boat that we'll be talking about today is Maxon Marina. They are now fourth. They're chasing Al Copeland in the Popeyes boat, which is riding in third. That's a little bit better start than Al has had in some of his past races. Well, it's a big boat. It takes a while to get up on plane, and he's never really first at the line. It takes him about five, six miles, and then all of a sudden, it's go strong. Right now, Popeyes is third in the Superboat, seventh overall. The 231 Maxon, the other Maxon boat with Chris Laven, beat all the boats down to checkpoint number one. 
You're watching Offshore Racing at its best, and we'll return to the HFC Pro Series Popeye's Offshore Grand Prix. But first, this. You're fired. Who cares? I never want to see you in this house again. Oh, who cares? Uh, the thing I can hope for is a little rougher water to get the speeds down, make me a little more competitive in that area. I do have a larger boat than him, and it will handle the rougher water a little better. Uh, John's a tough competitor, which everybody likes. Uh, you know, good competition, and uh, we just got to go out there and try it to get uh, do a little better job. The pro stock class is very interesting, and we have quite a few entries, Dick. Let's take a look at the lineup right now. The P4 is Captain America, also involved there will be Laser Express, the Captain Maintained, Team Skater, and Agitator. Also in the pro stock class, PTM2, the Boardwalk, Triple Threat, and Miss Don Q. We go to the start line right now where the pro stocks are getting ready to start with the modifieds and there they go right now we see the pace boat pull off to the top of your screen you can just see the wake of it there m1 special edition has taken the first in the modified and john delia once again is out in front he's a goer isn't he <laughs> yeah i'll tell you he and digger durgans have more fun on that boat and they love to be out in front but this guy has plagued him every race so far this year dirty laundry Yes, he is a competitor, and he's always second. He says, today I want first. This guy would like to win this one, Mike Drury. He is the race chairman for this particular event and racing, of course, out of New Orleans. Here's the boat that is now first in the pro stocks, the triple threat, Wayne Vince. He's got himself a little bit of a rough ride coming up. We're going to see a lot of those smaller boats bouncing around today. Team Skater in second place in pro stock. The Laser Express running third, and even so, throttle man Milton Lipschutz has faith in his new engine. The reason we went with the lasers this year, uh, even though we may be down a little bit in power, is because of the reliability of them. Our race strategy for, t for today will be uh, not necessarily to be the fastest, but to stay together and make it the 130 miles that we'll be racing today. P4 Captain America has now moved up into fourth place. Boardwalk is in fifth place. That's pro stocker number P70, Nikki Kutro out of Connecticut. And again, we emphasize we're sure he has enough gas on board. Oh, boy. <laughs> He's not going to live that down all year, is he? First race of the year, and he runs out of gas in sight of the finish line. There's the P-43, the PTM-2. That is now running in sixth place in the pro stock. But at this point, it's a wide open field where the water is rough as it is, Jim. No doubt about it. Team Skater has now dropped back to seventh place after making a good run just after the start. And we've had a lot of change in positions in the various classes that have already taken the start here on Lake Pontchartrain. Here's the agitator now running in eighth position in the P-40. This is the father and son team of Allen and Kirk Dunteman. And notice there are three outboard engines in line on that boat, as there are on the Miss Don Q. Miss Don Q currently running back to the pack in ninth. Well, racing is not the only thing that the racers have had their minds on this week. A little party time and nostalgia was in order the other night for Big Al and the gang. Big Al being Al Copeland and the gang, including none other than Fats Domino and a lot of other fine folks from around the New Orleans area. I'll tell you one thing, Dick Rippin, you missed a good meal when you missed this party. Five different checkpoints, Cajun cooking, five different types of food, and was it good? And everybody obviously getting totally involved in what was happening, too. And then the business of picking the queens for the Offshore Grand Prix, and of course the sponsor, HFC. A lot of local beauties and local talent. And needless to say, the judges had a rather tough time deciding they had to put a lot of concentrated effort into this portion of the program. There you can see they're very concentrated. Yeah, tough job, but somebody's got to do it. There's the cutest queen of all. And here's a pair of queens to draw to. Jennifer Sinet for HFC Pro Series and Laura Dragon for Popeye's Offshore Grand Prix. All right, here's the starting lineup for the Stock A as we go back to action on Lake Pontchartrain, the S5 American Express, Crime Buster, and Panama Jack. In Stock A, the Phantom 2, Breakaway, and High Risk. Stock B, Velocity, Fully Involved, Ricochet, Liberator, and Double Trouble. And on the start line, watch that boat in the lead as it leaps out of the water, crashing back down in the start of Stock A and B. Byron Hill of Fort Myers, Florida. The boat's name is Panama Jack. There you see it, Byron and Terry Hill. They are brothers, and they are going to have a rough ride in this one today. Brad Cox and J.D. D'Elia are in second place. It is really tight. The S-30 Phantom has moved out into third. There you see a good shot, Jim, 
into breakaway, and already that boat is getting roughed up. Yeah, these boats here, the stock A and B, are smaller boats, and they're going to have to watch out for some of these rollers and holes here today. The American Express is currently riding in fourth place. Two 200 horsepower Mercury engines power this 24 foot skater. It is a stock A boat, and there are stock B boats. What's the difference, Dick? Well, we just made the change right there. Stock A was the catamaran-type boat. The A Liberator S21 is a stock B boat, and this is leading in the stock Bs right now. In this rough water, now this lake is only 15 feet deep, but it roughs up real good, and in this rough water, the V-bottom hulls are probably going to have a greater advantage. Fully involved, another V-bottom boat now in second place in the stock B, the S16. So we watch closely, and these boats do seem to be right off the bat riding a little bit smoother than the cats. The cats are jumping out. If the waves were a little closer, possibly they'd have a smoother ride. Looking back at the super boats, the 231 Maxon heading for the pits, apparently out of the race. That's right. Attrition is going to take hold now as these boats watch out for this rough water. Here's Al Copeland, a hometown boat close to your screen and out there I believe is yes it's Gentry from Honolulu Hawaii this is going to be a drag race all the way around everybody has been waiting for this one you know Copeland is going to go for it it's in his hometown and he didn't like the fact that Gentry beat him out the last time these two ran but Gentry in New Orleans actually set the world record for the Super Bowls and Gentry of course hadn't finished a race in two years the last race he won it he is thirsty to continue. And while we talk about those two front runners, let's not forget about Max and Marina. That boat is very much involved in this right now, and he's hot on their tails. And this, again, being a V-bottom boat, may stand a little bit of, a, of an advantage on the rest of the field and the Cats. The newest entry in open class is leading right now the Thriller, Ed Martinez's boat. And that boat is right out of the box, and he has got to be pleased with the way that boat is operating right now. It caused a lot of comment coming in. Sal Magluta in the 25 Seahawk won the last race, running second today, hoping his luck will hold. We got out to right track finally last race. Uh, we had a bad year last year, and we were in back in our winning ways, and hopefully we can continue that. Will strategy change from the last race as compared to this one? I don't think so. If we want, I think we'll just keep doing the same. I think we'll stay up there with the pack and then uh, near the end just push it. Well, pushing him right now is Sal's sister ship and driver Willie Falcone. He's in the new team Seahawk boat. And Willie wants to make it tough for Sal to win. Yeah, I always like to be first. Uh, Sal, you know, the sister ship is a uh, very fast boat in flat water. So, but this race we have the new boat now, the 44, 41 foot uh, Cougar. And uh, it's the first race. Uh, it's doing pretty well. Still got to work on that a little bit more. But it's, uh, I think we're going to keep up with Sal and the other, you know, the other boats. Proves one thing, Dick. They're competitive within their own team. They certainly are all the way. Here's Spirit of America. Now, this boat looks like it's riding fairly smooth for a catamaran at this point. And we're going to watch it very closely because it does get airborne every now and then. They were fourth, Spirit of America. This is the fifth place boat, ACR Systems. I wonder, Jim, how the effect of the canopies is today with the spray coming up and going into the wind like that. It gives them some protection, and uh, actually the throttle men today have their hands full. Well, this is a boat without protection of the canopy anyway, and this is one of the V-bottom boats, Silver Bullet. They're now in sixth place back there. A lot of work being done in that cockpit as the boat gets airborne again. Riding light on the front end, but taking the water pretty good. And this water is rough. We've had a lot of boats drop out. We're getting reports. The 1987 Popeyes Offshore Grand Prix Powerboat Race will continue from New Orleans, Louisiana, right after this. Back to offshore racing on Lake Poncha. Drain offshore and out of the water. Jim, special edition, getting roughed up. Yes, he is, and Digger Duggins really has his work cut out for him. Look at when he comes out of the water, he's got to get off those throttles, or those props will wind up too tight. And right behind him, Dirty Laundry M3, so they can't get off too long. They've got to get those props back down into the water, but you can see Dirty Laundry is also fighting it. Seems to be riding at this point just a little bit smoother. Innovation, plugging right along. Mike Drury, he knows this lake well, being from New Orleans. But nobody knows the lake well when it's choppy like this. They have to be careful. Boy, that is true. The water is getting choppier, which favors the deep Vs. Peter Hildago of M11, a catamaran, feels that could affect the outcome of the race. Basically, uh, I feel that the conditions uh, are really throwing us off a lot today, and I just hope that everybody takes that in mind and uh, they have a uh, safety in mind before anything else as far as pushing it. So I suggest that they just take that in mind and just run a safe race. I think today you will see more than half the fleet go out on the, under these conditions. 
And speaking of attrition, right now the Baja Bandit 2 has the port engine dead, as we can see. The only one running is the starboard engine on the right side. These guys are okay, but you know there's a lot of danger involved in offshore racing. A boat goes over or something like that. A guy gets disoriented underwater. The night before the race at the New Orleans Hilton, the McMillan Offshore Survival Technology Group had a demonstration. Ernie Schmidt was there. I'm here with Eddie Martinez, driver of the open-class boat Thriller. This is one of the boats that has the new safety capsule and five-point harness system in the boat. Ed, have you ever been underwater in a situation such as this? Well, actually, Ernie, if you remember, yes, I flipped the boat a couple of years ago. Uh, in that situation, I got thrown out of the boat, which was, uh, in that situation was better, but at the speeds we're going now, we have to stay in the boat, and uh, this will be a new sensation, being upside down, strapped in before, I was, before being able to get out. Just to complete the sensation, they're also putting blinders on the drivers as they go under. Dr. Matt Houghton, the medical and safety director for the Offshore Racing Commission, was there to observe the tests. We've learned that with flying free from the cockpit at the speeds we're going now, we have compounded the injuries and made them much more deathly. So the effort now is to restrain the competitor in the cockpit and appropriately train him for escape. And this is exactly what we're doing here in the pool behind us today. These are experience builders and uh, confidence builders. We would like to build simulators that give us actual opportunities like their cockpits to to extricate themselves and mm -hmm. to practice with our paramedics extricating those competitors from those cockpits. It's a new era in offshore safety, and Dr. Houghton, we thank you very much. Well, back here to the action. Look at here, Dick. We've had a problem on the course. I believe that Seahawk right upside down. It certainly is, and uh, we can see there that all three of the members of the team are now floating in the water. Boy, the boat is going right down, and that's one of the dangers that we were talking about in that survival test. But one of the good sportsmanship moves is the M3 Dirty Laundry going right out of the race. Up there in the lead goes out to help a fellow driver. Moving up to the front of the pack one more time. Here's the Popeye's Diet Coke boat. Al Copeland still standing very strong. And still, Jim, the drag race with Tom Gentry. It looks like they're just going for a Saturday afternoon ride, a Sunday ride, if you will. But look at this. One boat will take a lead by a nose, then they'll back and forth as the Gentry Eagle on the outside and Popeye's on the inside battling for the Superboat supremacy here on Lake Pontchartrain. Tough competition out there all the way. Pro Stock is one of those classes with tough competition. Oh, my goodness, one of the main contenders in that class is out of it. I'll tell you what, Bill Kay knew what they were expecting. They had to push it. Uh, in Pro Stock, the whole class is tough. Uh, Boardwalk's been running real strong. Team Skater, Don Q, uh, a real tough class. Uh, you, you can't count any of them out. Leading right now, taking over in the pro stock, the P-70 Boardwalk has moved up to first place. That's Nicky Cutro out of Lake George, New York. His throttleman Tom is out of the Connecticut area. They have fought hard in this water, and you can see that boat's taking a little bit of a beating out there as they continue to lead in this field. He's looking for his third straight win on the circuit. Good competition, and there's a good shot of the competition. The P-5 Laser Express. I'll tell you what, John Engel's been on him all the way. Yeah, he's pushing him all the way for sure. Laser Express getting a pretty good ride in rough water right now, battling with Nicky Kutro at the top of your screen. So we have a couple of drag races going on. Now, here's a guy that's not drag racing anybody. The P4 Captain America has fallen victim to attrition. Danny Martinez no going in that this could happen. Well, the only strategy here at the lake is to uh, go as fast as you can and hope that the faster boats are going to break down. Usually here, since everybody's running pretty much flat out, uh, you know, the attrition rate is pretty, it's pretty big. So while the laser and the boardwalk battle out in the P-Class for first and second, here's the third place boat, Team Skater. Larry Van der Meden, I'll tell you, he's doing a good job of driving out there, and uh, these are not ideal conditions by any stretch of the imagination. That boat is taking a bit of a beating out there, but he's holding it in there beautifully. A lot of cooperation between the driver and the throttleman navigator. Miss Don Q, Juan Sorales, the P-88. That's one of those cat boats. But again, uh, he's handling it very well. He's taken a couple of good hard pops, but mostly back in. He's moved up from ninth to fourth place, so he is doing a great job in this water. More action from the Giants of Offshore and the 1987 Popeyes Offshore Grand Prix when we come back. 
The number 25 Seahawk is on the bottom. The crew has been brought back to the pit area for a condition report. Dick Criffin. Cell number one, are you all right? Yeah, I'm fine. I think so. Okay, you got banged around a little bit. What happened out there? We had taken the turn and we were stretching out to go to the check boat number four in the, in the medium lap. And then Thriller came back out, so I wanted to go on the inside and between them and uh, and Popeye or Gentry, one of the two, and apparently between their wake, the way the conditions are, we must something must have, and we just went in the air and flipped. Yeah, because this particular boat, Seahawk, has been a strong, strong boat for you. You haven't had that kind of problem. No, never, never. It's just, uh, you know, one of those things, I guess. The crew's okay, and that's good news. Here's a boat that's running real well after finishing fifth the last race, and driver Byron Hill tells us why. We've done uh, a lot of mechanical things. We've got the boat back in shape, uh, mechanical-wise, and we've also done some changes uh, to help performance uh, top end in the smooth water race, we're hoping. Panama Jack currently running first in stock A, and Dick Crippen is back with us now. That's right, and we're glad to report again that the uh, crew of Seahawk is all right. There you see the picture of J.D. D'Elia, Jr. He is the young man that is throttling that boat that you're looking at right there called Breakaway. Brad Cox, of course, is the man that's driving the boat. They're doing a good job holding on to second place, going back to third place. The boat is John Henry Falk's high risk. And again, the boat is a little bit deceiving, Jim. We look down from the helicopters and you kind of lose the impact and you don't realize how hard those boats are hitting into the water. They're taking a good lick. Those hulls will come up with some cracks after this one. They'll have to be real careful and examine them closely. Here's Fully involved. They are first, and they are doing a fine job of commanding first place in the S-16. No question that they have had to constantly go up and down on those throttles to keep the boat up there. Second place, and really taking a pounding out there, Jim, the S-9 velocity. No doubt about it. The stock A's and B's have their hands full today in rough water. Here's the Liberator. That's taking quite a bit of a pounding. Most of the drivers, I think, were expecting a much different kind of race. John Knoll was no different. Yesterday, when we tested our boat, we came down here prepared to run in a smooth, uh, smooth lake instead of the ocean, and we were set up for speed. We went out and tested yesterday, came back in and changed our boat back over, changed our trim tabs and our props, lowered our engines, and prepared for today for a rougher water water race. And a rougher water race sees this boat, the Liberator, in third place. One of the new boats on the circuit this year is the S-19 Ricochet. Driver Brad Lang kind of excited about things. Well, we're real excited because it's a brand new boat. Uh, we just had one race on it. And we've made a lot of changes, and hopefully they'll be the right ones. Now, how do you promote a race such as offshore racing in a town like New Orleans? Well, you get all the press together, the media, television commentators, radio newscasters, disc jockeys, people that write articles in the magazines and the newspapers and bring out the family and race mini style around a miniature course. That was just one of the fun events connected with the race this week. Of course, New Orleans is a fun city. HFC's Joe Jeffers enjoyed it. If you're talking about having fun, this is what fun is all about. A great time. What else do you do besides watch the race? You know, I find it great to be able to mingle with the people and get to know the drivers and the teams. These, these are real professionals. They're, they're, they're here to win. I understand you have a hospitality tent and there's, there's uh, food and other kind of good refreshments? Well, you know, it wouldn't be a party and it wouldn't be fun if you didn't have food and refreshments. You know, Jim, I think the best way really to describe offshore racing is that it's, it's a happening. It's drivers out really proving their, uh, their excellence on the water. It's people having fun, people enjoying themselves. This is Christmas every time I come to this race. This is true right? Well, I can see you had a real good time, Dick Griffin. Well, you're not kidding, and I'll show you some other guys having a good time right here, and these are the two leaders of this race overall. In the white boat, now in second place is Tom Gentry, and he's moving up on the Popeyes, and once again, Gentry is going to take the lead in the number nine, Gentry Eagle. So Tom Gentry, out of Hawaii, is dominating the field right now. Al Copeland in Popeyes is right behind him. They have been trading the lead on and off all afternoon. And this boat, the number 23 Maxon, Tim Sasuli, currently in the Superboat class, riding in third place. 
Let's go back to the open class right now. And uh-oh, look what happened here, Jim. He's lost something on the boat. He's the leader in open class, and that brand new boat has lost the part of the cowling or the hat. I guess you can have all sorts of problems when you take it out of the box for the first time, but fortunately, it doesn't appear to be anything too serious. Here's the hard-charging Bob Kaiser in ACR Systems. Yeah, Bob is doing very well right now. In fact, he is moving up on the leader, Thriller, and will probably make a run for it. But even his big boat, the Systems, is not riding very smooth today. And look at this. The Silver Bullet comes right out of that deep V and walks on the chine. Boy, that is some sight to see, too, as they handle that boat up and down on the throttles, as we have talked about so many, many times. Silver Bullet holding in third place. David Street is driving the former Cellutel. They don't have the engine power a lot of the boats have, but they got confidence. No, it's uh, it, it's it's simple. Just uh, take it easy. You know, the look at who went, look at who came in second nationally last year was a boat that was capable of running 88 miles an hour. So it doesn't take much more than 88 miles an hour to win a race. David Street is building a brand new boat. Meanwhile, he's leased this one from Red Crane of Michigan. And that's the Wildcat. More from the HFC Pro Series when we return. Back at Lake Pontchartrain, outside of New Orleans, Louisiana, Dirty Laundry right now is the leader in the modified class boats. That boat's getting a pretty good ride out there, Jim. Yep. I don't want to use a pun, but he's airing out his dirty laundry. <laughs> he certainly is. Their special edition, that's the main competition, and this is the boat that has really dominated the modified field all along, John D'Elia and John Digger Durgan. And they've yet to lose a race this year. M15 Innovation is back in third place. Mike Drury is the driver of that boat there. You see it. Now, he's race director also, and he knows how important it is to have backing. HFC Pro Series and Household Finance Corporation is a major sponsor. It's the first major sponsor that I know of. They're doing an excellent job. I think they're getting a lot out of the offshore racing this year. Uh, for our boat this year, Jolly Rancher Candy Company and uh, Mobile Oil Company is our sponsor for our boat, and we appreciate their help, and I'm sure all the racers appreciate all major uh, corporate sponsorship and, and look forward to working with anyone in the future. Mike Drury, we've got a real battle in the P-Class right now. Boardwalk and the Laser Express, and this coming right at you, Laser Express. Boy, and they are coming right at us, too. The P-5 now in command as they come around the turn. They've got that boat good, but look, at you can see the nose of the Boardwalk, Nikki Kutro. Nikki out of Lake George, New York, in Boardwalk, doing a beautiful job, and this is one fun racer. First of all, I'd like to tell you, my mom told me to tell you this. I'm 26 years old, single, good-looking, available, and housebroken. I'm a Pro Stock World Champion, and my ambitions for 1988 are to drive a bigger and better boat. With the support of Household Finance Corporation, they're bringing us greater TV coverage and more financial support for the drivers. And with teamwork like this, it's going to enable their sport to become bigger and better. Lots of action on the course with Nicky Kutro as he continues to lead in the P-Boats. Now looking at P7 back in third place, this is Team Skater. Now, isn't it amazing to see the different ride of these boats? That one looks like it's on a pretty calm lake. Yes, and uh, it's a deep V haul where today the catamarans will go from hall to hall. Actually, a catamaran has two small hauls and tied together by a low-flying wing. And the air gets up under there, and oh, we've got a problem. The Panama Jack, completely upside down. Well, we've got other boats stopping there also. Byron and Terry Hill in the water, and now we get the word that apparently Breakaway is starting back out onto the course. He's seen that everybody is safe on the Panama Jack. And now our helicopter camera shows the Breakaway has flipped over. Brad Cox and J.D. D'Elia, they're clear. I cannot believe the attrition of this one, and they there you can see the medical crew is rushing one of the drivers aboard the airbac ambulance and they are now taking him right out of the pit area and to the local hospital to check him out and we hear it's panama jack uh, driver byron hill well we wish him well as we go back out onto the course now this is the boat because of the other two boats out and 77 high risk has taken over first place for the class that's john henry falk driving that boat and here's the s5 american express right up in there with terry Ayers. He is second place on the course right now. And looking like he's riding good. However, we're getting word from the upper part of the course. The water conditions are worsening. We're going to watch that very closely. Here's the crime buster, James Kimes. Here's a guy that thinks there's more to racing than winning. Well, uh, this year we're franchising uh, our business uh, throughout the country. Our installation practices in burglar and fire alarms uh, for fuel safe control panels. And we thought this would be a good way to promote it as well as get in on the action 
And uh, we've worked behind the scenes in offshore racing for the last five or six years. And we decided we'd rather be in where the action is than behind the scenes for a change. Another reason for getting in offshore racing. And we'll be back with more exciting offshore race action. But first this. Dick Rivett, along with Jim Hendrick, we're back at Lake Pontchartrain in New Orleans, Louisiana. This is number 77 Thriller, first in the open class. And riding without his engine hatches, at least it's getting a little cooler ride. I think he had to be concerned whether he'd get air in there and it would slow him down, but apparently it hasn't slowed him at all. Here's last year's open class champ, Bob Kaiser. He is off to a bit of a slow start this year. Well, I had a little bad luck this year. That one spin out and I blew a drive last race. We were running real good last race, but... Uh, we made some changes. The boat's running real. It's back to where it was last year. I was having a little con control problem, but now I feel confident in the boat. It's, we're dialing it in. Certainly is dialed in at this point. He is riding in second place in the ACR Systems boat. Here's third place. Third place driven by David H. Street in the number 14 Wildcat. Now, if you, as we go into the cockpit, that's Red Crane for the towel and handling the throttles, and he has to really play them in this rough water. This is the fourth place boat, Craig Berry, and he's aboard the Silver Bullet. This is one of those deep V hulls, and they're taking some shock through that hull right at the point. But again, as we said earlier, that's not near as rough on these boats as it is on the catamarans. Going back to the modified class right now, here's your leader there, Joe Mock. He's driving dirty laundry. He has had quite a race out here today. Joe Impressio is doing the job, too, with the throttles. Again, the mo one of the most important jobs out there. It's one thing to steer the boat, but it's another thing to keep those engines working properly. Here's John D'Elia in special edition. This is the guy that would like to catch dirty laundry at this point, put it back in the washing machine to get it back into second or third place because John D'Elia, right at this point, is not looking good for the win today. Whoa, look at the innovation. That was a little innovation in its own. <laughs> <laughs> Mike Drury who, as we said earlier, is the race director out here, and he is right now running in third in innovation. Let's move back out onto the course and look at some of the super boats as they compete. Popeyes, again, on the near side of your screen, the yellow and white boat on the far side, neck and neck with them right now, the all-white boat from Hawaii, Tom Gentry. These guys, again, we emphasize, have been trading back and forth from this angle. It looks like Gentry may be out by about a nose on the Popeyes. And the throttle man, John Connors, nobody to fool with. He has throttled some world championships in his time. Well, right now, we're getting word that the officials are huddled, and we are looking for a decision. Apparently, with the boats that went over, there could be a problem out on the course. There is. The black flag is out. The black flag has gone out, Jim. That signifies that the race is stopped at this point. Apparently and unofficially, we are getting word that the medical crews were all occupied. And well, and you see right there the roughness of the water. Whoa, look, look at, at that. that. And they don't want to take a chance with another boat going over. And look at Popeyes go out in front. These guys do not know the race has been black flagged. They will not know till they get to the next checkpoint. And who is ever out in front will win this race at that point. Al Copeland out in the lead in the Popeyes Diet Coke boat. He takes the win at the black flag. He will take first place. Tom Gentry in the Gentry Turbo Eagle will take second. And we'll be back with more finishes in the Popeyes Offshore Grand Prix in a moment. We're back at Lake Pontchartrain now as we finish up the Popeyes Offshore Grand Prix. There's Thriller, the open class winner. They gotta be happy with the brand new boat. That's right, right out of the box. They lose the hats, they go on, and they're a winner. Second place in the open class will go to the young man from Detroit, and he's had, as we said, sort of a slow start on the season, but Bob Kaiser's hanging in there, and he'll get it. And you know all the second place boats say, darn, I wish that black flag wouldn't have come. Oh boy, that is the truth. That sure threw a little bit of a wrench into things and a lot of plans and a lot of strategies. Here's the M3 Dirty Laundry. This is winner of the Modified Division. And the first time they've won this year and the first time that John D'Elia has been unseated. That is correct. And John D'Elia will take second place in the boat called Special Edition. That's the M1, a boat designated by that snow owl on the side there. And there you see the Special Edition boat. John Digger Durgans is the throttle man on it, and John D'Elia is the driver. The M1 Special Edition taking second place in this race. Right behind them is the Innovation Boat. That's driven by Mike Drury of New Orleans, Louisiana, and I think his crew will be happy with third place. Jim Hendrick is in the pit with the Super Bowl winner, Al Copeland.
Well, the second year in a row, it's Popeye's Diet Coke winning here on Lake Pontchartrain. Al Copeland, you had a battle with one Tom Gentry. Yes, we did. It was fantastic. We had that, that last that last lap was really, really something. It seemed the Gentry ego had more in the turns and faster acceleration. So how'd you get by him? He did, and he's got a little speed on us, we believe. But um, in rough water, this uh, this boat's been around for a long time. It's been a hell of a boat, and Bill's done a hell of a job on the throttles. And we just went for it after we turned that checkpoint one down there. And okay, Bill Sirois, what about it? Was your, you had your hands full? Yeah, it was no cho no uh, no choice really. I mean, on that last lap, we knew that. That Tom had boat speed on us, so uh, when we turned to the to the rough water, we knew we had to exercise him, and uh, that's that was the only choice we had, and we did that and pulled him about a half a mile in the rough stuff, and then uh, I don't know if it's fortunate or unfortunate, but when the, we got the black flag, uh, I mean obviously it was fortunate for us that we won, but uh, um, I think that had we gone the whole distance, it would have been pretty close at the end. Of course, Al Copeland and Bill Sorois with Al Copeland Jr. stand where a happy crew of the Popeyes Diet Coke. And Popeye's Diet Coke taking first place, Gentry Turbo Ego second, Maxon Marina and Club third. Now let's go to Jim and the winner in the open class. The winning team, the thriller in open class, Ed Martinez, the driver, driver record Jack Clark. He's also the throttle man. Here you had a problem. You lost your steering in lap one. We lost the steering. We lost the hatch. We were fighting the wheel all the way. Jack was helping me a lot with the throttles, double throttling and so on to get me going straight. But yeah, it was a fight from lap one. Oh, my goodness. And then, of course, you had your hands full with the cavitation. That's for sure. <laughs> well, they've gone from a 10th and 11th place finishes to this third race of the year in first, even without steering, the crew of the Thriller. We congratulate the Thriller crew. And, of course, ACR Systems is second, Wildcat is third, and Silver Bullet fourth. Now let's go back down to Jim, who's standing by with the modified winners. A new winner in modifieds for the first time in 1987, Jody Laundry. Driver Joe Mock. Joe, pretty good. Beautiful race out there today. You thought it was beautiful? Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. It's the only beautiful because you took the check, the right. flag. And the check. And the check. Right. Joey impressed you on the throttles. You had your hands full after, you know, on and off today, right? Yes, I did. I had my hands quite full. Well, what do you have to do uh, compared to a smooth water to maybe the rough water? Well, you got to be careful and watch the engines and drives and propellers and stuff. This way you don't jump out of the water and wing them and start breaking things. When uh, you wing it, that means you're out of the water, the RPMs are too high, and you break the engine. Yeah, oh, yeah, you can break engines, you can break out drives and uh, gear cases and stuff. So you got to be careful. you got to throttle back, and you want to add power when you need it, so this way the boat doesn't enter the water and uh, sink. It's not always who's the fastest, but sometimes who's the smartest. The winning team is Dirty Laundry in the Modifieds. So the final results show in Modifieds, Dirty Laundry, then Special Edition, John DeLee and M1, and Innovation Mike Drury, M15. We had several accidents. Byron Hill in the Panama Jack, we understand, had some abdominal injuries and was later released from the hospital, and J.D. DeLea being loaded into the ambulance there. We got a decision on the black flag from Dr. Matt Houghton. At about 1.28 by my watch, we decided because of the accidents that had occurred on the course, the tie-up of medical boats and the fact that we were down to one medical helicopter along with a deterioration of the course wave conditions we felt that it would be to our best advantage to black flag the race at this time the winners were well established we get the word that uh, J.D. D'Elia has suffered a broken shoulder we're glad that the injuries to the drivers were no more serious than they were and we expect to see all of them back racing shortly the Pro Stock and Stock A classes are coming in, and we'll be back with the rest of the action in a moment. Dick Griffin and Jim Hedrick back in Lake Pontchartrain in New Orleans, Louisiana, as we watch Nicky Kutro aboard Boardwalk coming in a winner, P70, and he's got to be happy about that. That's his second in a row. The only race he has not won was the first race of the year. But he ran out of gas. And you will not let him forget that either. P5 Laser Express, John Ingle. They are coming in second place in the pro stock. We congratulate them. A good run for the Laser Express. Okay, Dick, it's your turn to go down to the windy docks, interview some of the winners, while we'll bring the rest of them home. This is John Henry Falk in the stock A class. He's the winner. And they have had a good race. They in fact and stopped a couple of times to check on the boats that were flipped over and they still came home a winner. Fully involved is the winner of Stock B. As we told you earlier, Stock A is the catamaran type. Stock B is the single haul. Now let's get down to Dick Crippen for the winning driver interview. Dick? Well, I'd have to say I think the gas can joke is just about worn out on Nicky Kutro. Nicky, you did it again. 
twice in a row. I think I think we can bury the joke. Yeah, it was a great race. It was a little snotty out there. And uh, Tom, my throttle man, ace throttle man, the best in the world, pulled me through. It was a great race. We had a little uh, uh, action there with uh, Laser Express. It was right on our tail for the last uh, 20 or 30 miles and gave us a real fun race. Well, congratulations, Nikki. We congratulate all of the Boardwalk crew. Laser Express second, Miss Don Q and Team Skater. Now we have the winner of Stock A with Jim Hendrick. With a crew of high risk, Rick Felson is the throttle man and owner. The driver, of course, is John Henry Falk. John, I understand you were in the water with the driver of the Panama Jack, and you did stop your part of the race to assist. Yes, we did. Uh, we saw him flip over, and we went over to help him. Uh, I would want somebody to do that for me, so I jumped in the water. There were no paramedics, and we've all had training, so I stopped to help him, and thank God it looks like he'll be okay. That's the sportsmanship they have. Rick, of course, you concur with his decision to stop racing as far as your boat was concerned, at least momentarily. No question about it. Three of us stopped. Breakaway, the Phantom, we're all friends. We all stopped to help each other. We waited a good 10, 15 minutes. When he was out of the water, we knew he was okay. We started our own race, all equally, and the race continued from there. Unfortunately, J.D., he pushed it, he pushed it. He also turned it over. We were in front. We didn't see him, but the Phantom boat was nice enough to stop and help J.D. Congratulations, guys. Sportsmanship is what it's all about. The Stock B winner, Joe Sorrentino, the fully involved. He's just gotten his third victory of the 1987 season. Dick Crippen? Let's talk with another winner right now, Joe. You went out there and fully involved, and were fully involved in a lot of chop and a lot of wave action. Yes, it was kind of rough out there, but we just decided we would tuck it in and run how we could run and let the other boats beat us or break. Now, I, I'd like to say you're a stranger to this kind of water, but I know you're not. No, it's we've had a lot of rough races. How was it as far as operating the boat and the motors and keeping them in tow? Well, tucked in, Skip, the throttle man, just he did all the work. He was working. We were just uh, watching the waves and steering. It, it was a, a rough race. It just took a lot out of you. Final results once again. High risk first, Phantom 2, American Express, and Crime Busters in Stock A. Moving over to Stock B, we have fully involved Liberator, Velocity, and Double Trouble. And right now, we'd like to honor our winners. Well, it has been a busy day for race officials here in New Orleans, Louisiana. I don't think we've ever seen this high of an attrition rate in a race. Not for a long, long time. I may recall one up in Northport, Michigan that was just as bad. But here for a lake this size, an average sheen about 8 to 9 feet, the deepest part 15 feet, northeast winds up to 25 knots and gusting, you know you're going to have a problem. It wasn't fun for the drivers. It certainly wasn't, but I hope a lot of the spectators watching with us here on TV that a lot of them learned a little bit about the importance of those life jackets, especially especially for the people who are just going out on a lake, because this is a lake and a shallow lake at that. With the stuffings, with the sinkings, with the rollover from American Dream, as they told us, the canopy saved their lives. I think that the Offshore Commission is on the right track of putting canopies on these boats, getting the drivers in five-point harnesses. They can now go out and compete and uh, compete with more safety. All right, and it's going to be the continuation of the circuit from here on out. A lot more good racing coming your way. We want to thank you for joining us this day and being with us on this broadcast from New Orleans, Louisiana. I'm Dick Crippen for Jim Hendrick. We'll see you next time around. The HFC Pro Series, the first sponsored professional offshore powerboat racing series in the history of the sport. The HFC Pro Series is sponsored by HFC. Performance, it's what separates the best from the rest. A promotional consideration has been provided by the Hyatt Regency New Orleans, the luxurious 1200-room Hyatt Regency New Orleans located adjacent to the Louisiana Superdome.